Hey everybody, I'm here to do something I haven't done in a while, and that's a review TNA Impact tonight. And I don't know how some people are going to react to to Impact or to anybody's review of it, but uh, I will say this: I will say that it was decent at best. Um, you know, I hadn't watched TNA in a while. You know, I downloaded the one before lockdown and checked it out a little bit. But to me, I don't know how people will react uh, to, to me saying that it was decent. I mean, there are some things in TNA that I will say that have potential once they get on the right track. Um, first of all, the whole AJ Bully Ray deal, if done right, has has the abilities of being probably one of the more intense and probably more violent feuds they have, even if it's short term or not. Um, the whole thing, um, you know, and the opening, you know, involving AJ, Bully Ray, um, was great, was terrific. That's, to me, that's how you open up a, a show sometimes. But, um, and then we get into the whole Sting Hogan RVD deal. Now we find out. Um, this whole network deal. Now apparently no one has shown up yet, so we don't know if that's going to happen next week or not. Uh, but apparently this whole Sting situation, uh, we find out that the network is sticking it again to Hogan and Bischoff by stating that Sting, um, as world champion, if he would have won the title, which he did, that Sting can defend against anybody he wants. Basically he can choose his opponents who he wants to face, so he chooses RVD. Now, after what happened at the end of tonight on Impact, um, I'd have to say it's probably going to get switched into a three-way dance again. I could be wrong. And what I mean by that is it's going to involve Anderson. So we'll probably see what happens. But this whole situation with, with Sting and, and Hogan it's going to lead to a match, and I think it's going to lead to a match, apparently, at Slammiversary. I feel it. Um, I know some people don't want... I know there's a lot of people that don't want to see Hogan and Sting hook it up again. And if it's for the world title, I know they don't want to see that, because there's always the potential that Hogan's going to end up becoming world champion, and they don't want to see that. So, again, there's the potential for that. Now... Of course, we still continued on with this whole situation in the knockouts division. On one side, we have the tension and the bickering and the possible separation of Tara and Madison. So that's what's going to happen. And apparently it looks like the, having Madison play up the role of somebody that would rather put the blame on somebody else than herself. That eventually, and that eventually is going to come back and bite her. Um, and then, of course, we have the whole Velvet, Winter, Angelina deal. And apparently we got a little bit more clues as to what's really going on. So it sounds like it's a whole um, drug deal, basically, that Angelina's been drugged with some kind of drug that's making her be Winter's slave or something like that. And, uh, and, and to me, I think it's very predictable that Angelina eventually is going to turn on Winter, that looks, you know, I, I just feel that's what's going to happen. They're going to have Angelina turn on Winter, because when it looks like Winter has her probably getting ready to attack Velvet, that's when Angelina will attack her. So, that's obvious there. And then, of course, unfortunately for some people, um, Karen and Jeff are on TV twice tonight, at the beginning, doing a backstage segment, riding in on a carriage, and then doing a crowning moment, and then doing a ceremony. Then they had a ceremony where Karen was crowned the Queen of the Mountain. Now I know some people, like the Schleg Daddy on Off the Rope Show, is not going to like that because apparently now he's got to deal with horse, as he puts it, horse face and fuck face even more so. But there is a development. For those of you that didn't read the spoilers like I did, and but even but still watch the show, and which I did. Kurt Angle um, back, met backstage with Eric, 
Eric, um, well, Eric Young's apparently out of his mind right now, you know, kind of deal. So, Kurt notices what Eric's feeding the horses. He's feeding them beans. And apparently this causes horses to shit a lot. And this, so he tells Eric to go get some buckets, and it kind of gives him ideas like, wait a minute, buckets? Hmm. You kind of get where I'm going with this, right? So what happens is after Karen's crown, he dumps the the, <laughs> the buckets of horse shit is dumped on there, supposedly. What it looks like is horse shit. More like mud, but what are you going to do? And then he angle slams Jeff onto the throne and into a bit of the shit along with himself. And then he tells Karen that his mistress, that his Mrs. Ang that his Miss Angle um, is coming for her. And that this Miss Angle is, this mistress of his, if you will, is just business. And that she's coming for Karen, and that she loves to dish out pain. She loves to hurt, or something like that. And from the reports that I've been hearing, apparently the Miss Angle, the mistress, is going to be Isis, the Amazon. You remember that that uh, girl that was on N that was supposed to be on NXT season four, season three, Iosta or whatever her name was there. That's going to be the Miss Angle, apparently, according to some reports. Now Isis has denied reports. According now, re now according to some sites, Isis has denied any reports of this happening. But of course, we've seen that sometimes when somebody denies the reports like this, they do it because they don't want people to know right off the bat what's really going on. So they want to throw them off. So apparently it sounds like Isis is the leading candidate, if you will, right now as the mistress and Mrs. Angle. And of course we had a backstage promo with Miss Testmarker. Apparently Miss Testmarker is back. She's trained, she's ready, and she wants to become champion. Um, what else? Oh yeah, we had a backstage segment with Anderson Hogan, and then before that, Hogan and Abyss. And then we had Abyss and RVD. Abyss beat RVD thanks to the interference of Hogan and a pipe. But then Crimson comes down, Crimson comes down and helps RVD. And what's unique about this is the segment that follows Scott Steiner has a face-off with Matt Morgan. Matt Morgan wants to refocus on being champion, but now he's got to focus on Scott to possibly see who gets that shot at the world title. And what do they do? They turn Scott heel again, or at least an in-betweener, or whatever you want to call it. So, they're going to do something there with them, probably similar to Joe and uh, Pope, maybe. I'm not really sure. Well, without the cameras and all that. But So it looks like they've turned Scott Steiner heel again, or at least an in-betweener. And then we have our world title match, which is Sting versus Matt Hardy, which is the first time they've ever met, as far as I know. Now, apparently, they had a backstage deal with Matt Hardy, saying that he's more cold-blooded than his brother, and that unlike his brother, he's going to finish off Sting, even though they both grew up watching him and idolizing him. So, what happens is we have a huge brawl before, as Sting is coming out, we see Mortal getting ready to attack him, but then here comes Fortune to attack Immortal. This of course opens up the door for one of the Immortal guys, Gunner, who apparently is being pushed as the TV champion, to hit Sting in the back of the leg, his uh, left leg if you will, with a pipe. Now this gives Matt Hardy an advantage during the match, but in the end Sting does end up winning the match with the Scorpion Death Drop, and remains the champion. But then what happens after he wins, Anderson comes out, Mike checks Sting, and Mike checks Matt Hardy. So apparently, TNA's playing up Anderson as their version, or as their version of this generation's Stone Cold. So, apparently that's what they're doing with him. And now, again, this is what goes back to what I mentioned at the beginning, the whole Sting versus RVD deal at Sacrifice looks like it's going to be a three-way again. So, yeah. That's what's happening, and apparently that's what's going to take place. Now, they may change it. They may have RVD go against Abyss or something like that. I don't know what's going to happen, but I think we're going to have a three-way again. 
as sacrifice. But um, yeah, apparently that's what happened. Oh yeah, we did have a oh yeah we did have a TNA tag team title match, Beer Money versus Murphy and Rob Terry, and G Beer Money does win the match, of course. And Rob Terry and Murphy they wanted to face Beer Money for the titles to not only redeem themselves in Hogan's eyes but to get revenge for what happened to Ric Flair because apparently Ric Flair tore his rotary cuff up when he got when he had that Fuji arm, Fuji arm, arm bar applied on him by Robert Root so apparently that's what's going on around there and that's what's come out of TNA Impact tonight so overall like I said it was a decent show I know some people may argue with me on that but Apparently we got some clues as to what's going to be happening and what more is going to be developed and apparently we got a new knockout on the way. TNA's answer to WWE apparently bringing an awesome Kong. TNA, they're going to bring in ISIS. So, apparently. So, to me, decent show. I think they could do a lot better, but we'll just have to see. And that's all I'm going to say. Comment down below. I'll talk to you later.